so much for sharing them with us. We greatly appreciate the wonderful gifts that so many people share. What I love about City of Light is that there's all these wonderful talents and gifts that people say, I'd love to share, I'd love to demonstrate, I'd love to offer. And not only in the fields of music, but also in cooking and hospitality and serving those who are in need through compassion ministries and programs. I appreciate so much the wonderful talents of so many. Thank you. Do you ever take a hike down an unknown path and find that every turn you make, there's something new, something exciting, maybe even something challenging? Well, that's a great metaphor for what life is all about. It's true. We never know what's going to go on and what's going to happen next, just beyond or just down the road of life. Who would have thought? Did anyone really think 2020 would turn out to be this kind of year? When you were in 2019, you were all thinking, can't wait for 2020, 2020 vision. It's going to be great. It's going to be mighty. It's going to be all kinds of exciting things. We're planning trips, all kinds of events, all kinds of programs, ministry expansion, all kinds of things. And wow, the road took a turn, didn't it? And on that road of adventure in life, sometimes we experience some bumps. There are some things along the road that we may carry along with us along the journey of life that we don't really need. Let me bring to thought, your thought, one of those things that, you know, we carry through the journey of our life that we don't really need, and that is regrets. Looking at our past, and too often we may see, as we think about the past of our lives, we think, wow, you know, I've got lots of painful experiences, things I really regret, things that I'm not comfortable with, things that just hold me back, and I keep holding on to them, carrying through the journey of life and holding on to them. If only we could understand that our limitations of the past need not be carried into the future. Wow, we don't have to carry them into the future. There's a lot of things we can simply unload or get rid of. Three years ago, I prepared to move. And I was preparing to move from East Point to Lawrenceville uh, and purchase a new house. Well, of course, you know what that's all about when you're selling a home. You kind of got to get rid of things and clean things out. Well, I went to the garage and began to clean my garage out, only to discover I had things that I'd been holding onto for years. When I began to look in the garage, I go, wow, I've had this for 15 years and didn't even know I had it. Or I've had this, this junk and I've been meaning to get rid of it and thinking I could get rid of it somehow, but I never did. And I just kept storing it and storing it and storing it. I realized finally, you know what? This junk could be hauled away. I could get rid of it. I don't need to move it with me. I don't need to carry it with me to the next house. How wonderful it is to think about these things in life that we don't need to hold on to. We don't need to keep. We don't have to carry them with us down the road of life. When it comes to those moments of regret, we wish somehow, oh, I wish I could just cancel them. I wish I could go back in time and just write cancel across. Wouldn't that be just wonderful if the bold letters and uh, we could go back in time and the experience of something that we went through and we encountered and we just regret so much, we could write canceled across it. Well, I'm here to tell you I've got some good news. You can. Jesus taught that we can release the mistakes of yesterday. As a master teacher and a wonderful way show of our life, he constantly taught and brought forth this truth that that which is of a mistake of yesterday can be transformed and changed in the sense of being canceled. I love this passage from Isaiah chapter 1, 18 says, though your sins, though your mistakes, though your errors in life be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. That which is this dark red stain now is cleared away and is white, removing all of the darkness of the stain. Those stains, meaning those moments of error thinking, when we made some choices that maybe weren't the best, where we missed the mark in life, 
We weren't achieving our highest and best. Well, I'm here to tell you, those things can be canceled. We can live released from the burden that they bear on our lives. We can live in a way that senses the wonderful power of liberation from past experiences. Are you ready to write canceled on your mistakes? Are you ready to write canceled on the moments in your life when you miss the mark? Are you ready to write canceled on those things that we may term as sin? Well, here's our chance. No matter what we've experienced of yesterday, no matter what it is, it can be changed. And that's the beautiful truth that's there for us. God's creative power is at work, always taking place, ready to bring change. Do we understand this? I don't know if we really do. That God is a God of change, of transformation, of making all things new. One of my favorite scriptures is, Behold, I am doing a new thing. I love it. You know, I love new things. I love trying new things. I love experiencing new things. And I love that the God that dwells within me is ever saying, I got something new. Here's something new I want to do in you, through you, and around you. I've got some new things that I want to unfold for you. And no matter what your past may have been, no matter what your circumstances, no matter what the choices may have been of your uh, previous yesterdays, there's something new that's unfolding for you. Behold, I've got something new for you. That's the very spirit that's speaking to us today. You see, this is important we understand, that what you did yesterday set the law of life in motion to create what you're doing today. What you did yesterday set the law of life in motion to create what you are doing today. And so what you're doing today sets the same law in motion to create what you will do tomorrow. What we did yesterday is carried in today only because we continue to give consent to it. Wow. We consent to a lot of stuff. We consent to carrying a lot of stuff. We consent to moving a lot of junk, carrying baggage with us. We consent to it and say, you know, let me hold on to this or let me carry it with me. Isn't it time to say no to some of the junk of yesterday? Because we don't want to bring it into our today. And what we bring in today, you know, is we're going to live out over and over again. And what we are thinking and doing today, we can create the kind of tomorrow, well, that we really wish we could experience. Now we have to remember that today is the day we live and the only day we live and yesterday has forever passed, right? The change that we need to make in our lives has to be done today. We can't go back to yesterday. It's gone, okay? So when we're talking about making a new thing, well, how do we make this new thing? Well, it happens right here, right now, in this moment. It happens today. You see, when we understand this, the change that we need to make within our lives has to happen in this moment. The regrets, the things of the past, we can't go back, but we can change them right here, right now, as we move forward. You know, when you're weeding your garden, we often find that there's weeds choking up the growth of things. I often laugh and say, you know, there's a passage in scripture when Jesus said, the poor will always be with you. I think it was a miss, a typo. I think it's the weeds will always be with you. At least that's the way it seems in my garden. Every week, you know, there's more and more weeds and they're choking out the things that I really want to grow and flourish. And so we pull them up. And when do we do this? Well, we do it today. We can't weed yesterday. We can't weed tomorrow because yesterday's gone and tomorrow's not here. So the only day that we have that we can weed our garden is today. And the only day that we can make changes and have transformation within our life is today. Right now, when we make this choice, this decision, I will no longer carry this into my tomorrow. I'm not welcoming it in my day and the journey of this moment. I am weeding my garden today. I'm getting rid of my junk today. I am letting go of the baggage today. We are so surrounded and immersed by this perfect and complete life. I want you to know that. All around us is this perfect, beautiful, complete life that's normal, happy, sane, harmonious, 
peaceful existence. But only as much of this life that I just described as unfolds for us, as we embody or that we really be allowed to become ours, what we really welcome into our life. Life will become for us this beautiful, amazing thing when we begin to embody it. Let's define that word embody. You know what I'm saying? Take it in. When we let it be an ex or we become an expression of it, we incorporate it. So life is full of this great goodness. There is a perfect life available to us, a life of ease, of grace, of love, compassion, a life of all complete a sense of joy and happiness. It's all out there. It's there for us. But we just have to begin to embody it, to take it in. That the goodness of God works for us by working through us, and it is in us. And we just have to recognize it. So when we're looking at all this junk we've been carrying from previous moments, yesterdays, past experiences, we look at that junk and say, wow, I could get rid of that today, right here, now? That's true. Yes, you can. And the beautiful thing is it happens when we begin to make this shift in consciousness from dwelling on the weeds in our garden, dwelling on the challenges, dwelling on the pains, dwelling on all the regrets, to now just embodying that very passage of Scripture we today think on these things. Whatsoever is good, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is just, the Scripture went on to say, think on these things, begin to dwell on them. And this is where we begin to say that we make every day a day of praise and thanksgiving. We begin to say, I recognize the goodness of God right here and now. And what a transformational thought that is. From, oh my Lord, I have deep regrets. Oh, the pains of yesterday are dragging them along. Oh, the mistakes I made. Oh, the things when I just missed the mark. And then we just release all that by recognizing and shifting our thoughts. And we begin to live today as though God were the only presence and the only power there is. And everything else, that which we have thought and termed as evil is gone from us. That which we've taught, thought and embraced as hurt and pain is gone and liberated. And we welcome this experience. All things are beginning to look new. God is doing something new within us. We're creating a tomorrow out of the consciousness of good today. What are you holding in mind today? What are you holding in thought today? What are you dwelling on today? What's filling your mind? Oh, all the bumps, all the road, the turns in the road, all the challenges, or the goodness of God, the good that's there. Too often our minds are burdened down with the mistakes that we have made and that we do not take time to forgive ourselves. That's very important. And to forgive others. And to start over again. Start over again. That's the good news. That we can begin again. We can start all over. We can push a reset button and reset everything in a new direction as we begin to change our thinking and change our thoughts, that which we're allowing to radiate, dwell within us, that we're allowing to cycle over and over again. We can't go to the past to make changes because those changes are going to be made right here and now. The mistakes of our forefathers, well, we're living in those, right? Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could go back and change those moments in history? Let's just travel back in time to the moments when uh, they were contemplating, should we bring slaves to America? Wouldn't it be great? We get, whoa, 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 let me tell you. I'll tell you all the problems you're going to have when you're introducing slavery to society. You don't want to go there. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do that? We can't. But we can change today our thinking about all kinds of circumstances, scenarios, and experiences. We can make changes here. And now, as we begin to remove from these things, remove these things from our thought process, we can't continue to cry over the past because the very day in which you are living in is creating your tomorrows. So if we're crying over past today, we're not creating the life that we really want 
for tomorrow. So what happens is we need to let go of this monotonous repetition of dwelling on past mistakes, dwelling on errors that keep cycling over and over, and we then create this is our next day, and we create it again the next day, and we create it again the next day. And so we say, wait a minute. Today's my day of change. Today's my day of transformation. Today's my day of releasing. Today's my day of forgetting. Today's my day of change and I'm moving in a new direction, the direction I so desire to experience. And my tomorrow is going to unfold just that. We begin then to make up our minds, to no longer create our future out of the past, but to create a new and more powerful and more exciting, more loving, more patient, more gracious, more, uh, shall we say, harmonious future. A tomorrow that fills the needs of this world where we are creating a world that works for everyone, not just a few. So we do this as we begin to use the law of good. The law of good. That's simply a consciousness of the good that is ours, a good that is already here. And allow that as we dwell on the good, that good begins to rise up, form and shape and mold us and create the life that we so desire. When we begin to say that I've decided to change all of this, I've decided to change and let go of this thoughts of regrets of the past, and I begin to say, you know what? I'm born again. I'm renewed. I'm a new person. I'm starting all over again. I have a new thought about this, a new way of thinking. I am embracing this good news. And this is where it gets even better. You know what? To bring about this wonderful transition, we don't have to change anything but ourselves. We don't have to change anything but ourselves. What? what, what you don't have to change others? Like, I don't need to change you and change you and change you. I don't need to change you. I gotta cha How about changing my world? I've got to change them. I've got to do all this change first. No, every change begins within us. And the good news is we don't have to change anything but changing ourselves. And we begin to create that which we so desire with our life as the change begins individually within each and every one of us. When we are carrying these negative experiences of our past in the future, what's happened is we've not disconnected them from our minds. And we have this sort of thread where it's just kind of a cord that holds on. It's a thread sewn into us. It's a connection. And today, the power of God is inviting us to cut the cord, cut the cord of memory, of that failure, of that hurt, of that pain, and stop uh, recreating a negative future. But now put all thoughts on what we believe and what we desire, what we believe God is able to unfold for us. So rather than constantly dwelling on a past and its failures, we as a world, as a community, as individuals begin to embrace this very thought, I am creating the world that I so desire and I'm holding it in mind. The world is good, the world is loving, the world is harmonious. Everyone is working together in sense of unity and collaboration. I see this. I live from that perspective. I invite that thinking to overcome all other thoughts and to shut them away. And I cut the cords. I disconnect with those negative thoughts that would want to wear down my life or recreate a tomorrow that I really don't want to relive. You know, we are living these things only because we didn't change our thoughts about it. So what the call of this beautiful text that you read so beautifully and we shared together in the opening of our service is, get back to the law of good. Get back to thinking and dwelling and contemplating the very good. That passage of scripture that says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, yes, right? if it's excellent, and if it's praiseworthy, think, dwell, contemplate, think about these things. So I invite you to join me in this proclamation, speaking out loud, that really says this is the affirmation that we share today, 
uh, let's share it with one another. Let's just think about this and say it out loud. I'm forgetting, releasing, canceling everything that was wrong in my past and looking toward that which is right in the future. I turn my thoughts to that which is good. That's right, that's what we're doing. Turning our thoughts in a 180 degree turn. We were thinking this way and allowing those thoughts of negativity to just keep rebirthing, rebirthing, recreating, recycling in a monotonous pattern of repetition. And now we're thinking this way, new thoughts. Thoughts that are releasing all the regrets of the past, the hurts, the pains, and saying, this is the future I so desire. It is one that is filled with the goodness of God because I dwell on these things. I think on these things. I turn my thoughts to the highest and best. The road of life has got some turns, doesn't it? Bumps in the road, challenges, surprises. The road of life's got all kinds of experiences for us, but it is a great and grand adventure. And in that grand adventure, it is ours to choose exactly how we'd love that adventure to unfold. Today's text is inviting us to this wonderful inspiration, this wonderful awareness, this wonderful aha. I embrace the law of good. I see the good. I dwell on the good. And I live from the good. And that good is shaping my day and my future. And so it is. So it is. Amen. Thank you so much.